Hi, this is Jeff from Jeff's Flight Log. Last fall, I explored the San Rafael Swell area, flying the canyon shown on the map. Earlier in this flight, I flew down Buckhorn Draw and on to Mexican Mountain Airstrip to check out the conditions there. I planned to land and camp at Mexican Mountain at the end of the flight. I came back here to fly the Little Grand Canyon of the San Rafael River in late afternoon. This is just past the bridge at the bottom of the canyon, near the junction with Buckhorn Draw. As I started up the canyon, I remember thinking how lucky I was to be here at this time and place. The conditions were fantastic. Just look at those golden cottonwood trees, the leaves absolutely still, and the sky was so blue. This trip almost did not happen. I wanted to fly Utah during the mellow Indian summer flying season, but my flying buddy Paul was going to be out of town for several more weeks, and another friend I fly with had to take care of his wife after her hip operation. I saw a perfect weather window of five or six days forming a few days out, so on a whim I contacted a pilot friend in Colorado, and he immediately agreed to meet me in Canyonlands. I flew and camped with him and another pilot for two days and nights, and they headed home this morning, so I was on my own. Although I prefer to fly with others, this sort of backcountry flying is, for all intents and purposes, a solo experience. I do enjoy hanging around the campfire and talking about my flights with other pilots, but when you're in the air, you're on your own. I did not know much about this canyon, the Little Grand Canyon, but with a name like that, how can you go wrong? I did know that a river flowed the entire length of the canyon, and since I had never heard of a towering waterfall on this stretch of the river that would surely be a major scenic attraction, I knew my path would not be blocked by a huge wall of rock ahead. As long as I stayed over the main channel of the river, I would be safe. I had also scouted the canyon at slightly higher altitude this morning, so I knew what was coming up and my moving map GPS display showed every bend of the river ahead. I wondered about this side canyon on the left. I could see it going off far to the west, but I had no idea where it went. I made a mental note of it, and as this flight unfolded, I found myself flying down this same canyon after exploring an unnamed secret valley far to the west. I hope to cover that in a future video. My trike likes to fly slow. For most of this flight, my airspeed was only around 50 miles an hour, but the slow flying speed gives my trike great maneuverability. I could do a 180 and turn around at nearly any point along the canyon. Also, the slow speed gives my trike a great climb angle, so as long as I'm able to see a clear path ahead, I could easily hop over any hairpin turns or simply climb out of the canyon altogether if necessary. My engine had been running smooth for over an hour. It wasn't going to fail me now. But if it did, I could plop down on a clearing on the canyon bottom below. I would need a helicopter to extract it, but I wasn't too worried. That wasn't going to happen. The only real concern I had was dealing with swirling winds down in the canyon. And that's why I delayed flying here until late in the day, when all would be smooth and calm. There was a one in a million chance that some other plane or helicopter was flying down the canyon, but I was on guard for that. 
And that's what strobes, transponders, and ADS-B displays are for. I was on full alert cruising up the canyon, but this flight was becoming one of the purest flying adventures I had ever experienced. A dreamlike sensation as I watched these unbelievably beautiful canyon walls stream by, following one bend of the river after another. I love that huge wall of sandstone on the right. I half expected to see someone camped along the canyon bottom, but there was no trace of anyone today. I've always wanted to fly below the rim of the Grand Canyon, but those flights were banned for pilots like me over 25 years ago. I have flown above the Grand Canyon, but it's just too big. This little Grand Canyon is just the right size for me to take in and absorb. This flight had become my best of all time. This is so amazing here. It reminds me of Zion Canyon, another place with a no-fly zone for low-altitude flights. I felt really lucky to find such a beautiful place that I can fly in. As I come around the corner here, look down in the river and check out the beaver dam. At times, the canyon walls did seem to close in a little, but I found if I kept my altitude just above the inner gorge, I had plenty of room to fly around in, and I could just hop over the thrashing turns of the river at the bottom of the canyon. Up ahead, I saw another large canyon heading to the left. This one had a good flow of water. I wanted to fly up there, but I wasn't sure the path was clear. So I decided to continue up the main canyon to where it dwindled away, then climb up and circle back to inspect the side canyon from above and make sure it had a clear, flyable path. It looked okay, so I returned to explore the side canyon and continue my adventure, but that'll be covered in another video.
I hope you like this trip. Please note I made an alternate version of this video without narration, without my voice intruding on the experience. I actually prefer that version. There is also a VR version, which is great fun too. You can use your mouse to swing around your point of view as you fly up the canyon. Please share this video with your friends and leave a comment if you like it. And come back here for more of my trike flying adventures at Jeff's Flight Line.